this is going to be archived, of course. This is one of those videos that you're probably just going to want to go on YouTube and rip and have and use as a reference point. Uh, and every time you create a new ad campaign, because, you know, there's a lot of subtle stuff that goes into an ad campaign. I'm not going to talk anymore about the subtleties of the ad campaign. I'm going to let Mike Trampy run it. And fortunately, we have him using a real life example. We have Tundra Beats, who's a, a um, B Club member who was selected at random to, to basically be a guinea pig. Mike's going to set up from scratch a, a Facebook and Instagram marketing campaign using Facebook business manager, I believe. No, we're gonna use ads manager. We're gonna use ads manager. All right, we're gonna use ads manager, which all of us have access to, and he's gonna set that up and optimize it for um, you know customer engagement. And this is this is amazing, and I thank you in advance for for being here yeah. and giving us th this game because this is not, this is the kind of thing that all those scammy Google sites charge you you know fifty nine ninety nine for, uh, and, and here we have it. So the first thing I'm assuming is everybody has installed their pixel code from their Facebook's ads manager on their BeatStars Pro page. Uh, Pink, can you help narrate? Like I said, I can't because I can't see the comments coming in as, a, as I'm screen sharing. So just, yes, no? I can't hear you, Pink. I actually can't see the uh, comments. My, my bad, I'm looking at it right now. We, we got a couple of people saying yes, a couple, yeah. So, so far, everybody's saying they have um, the pixel. But if they don't, can, can you direct them towards? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So basically, in Facebook Ads Manager, um, Ads Manager it can be accessed anywhere, like on your basic page. You can get it from this drop-down menu, if it would actually open. In here, right here, I have it over here on Explore. So there's different, different ways to get to it. And if you've never done an ad, you'll have to set all that stuff up, basic stuff, information, credit card, PayPal account, whatever you want to use. So once you load up ads manager, you got to make sure you get the right ad account. Like I have tons of ad accounts. So I was put on a Tundra's ad account as an advertiser, which you can give people access to if you want someone to run campaigns for you or collaborate or whatever you want to do. So with ads manager, you would drop down this top menu and go into all tools and go over to pixels. See, it changed back to me. You just got to make sure you're on the right account. So pixel basically if it's firing, it will be green and it will tell you like the last time it's updated, you can go into details if you want to. Um, you can change from today, yesterday, last seven, 14, 30, as you can see today, he's done, it's, he's triggered 1.1. Um, the majority of them being page use, um, people playing tracks, and then it drops, as you can see, to add the cards, track pulses and purchases. So it breaks down all this stuff in detail. So that's the first thing you want to make sure you have done is make sure your pixel set up and it's firing and, and all that good stuff. So there was a lot of stuff I could talk about. So I figured the easiest way to cover this is I'm going to try to, I guess, not pretend, but, you know, just assume that everybody's more novice and, like, kind of do a basic setup of things and then some more, like, in-depth stuff as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Tundra sent me some beats, beat videos to check out to use. This is what you should be doing before you even do any ads. So content is super important when it comes to doing ads. So there's many ways of doing them. Payne, what, what, what do you use specifically to, to make these types of videos, just so people have other options? Uh, I, I use Vegas, but I think most people use uh, God, um, After Effects. People use Premiere. People use... Uh, and where do, where do you get the images and stuff from? <clears throat> Photoshop, Google. I mean, After Effects, you, you can go on uh, YouTube and just search for audio responsive um, visualizer template and that stuff will come up. 
Okay. Uh, otherwise, you don't even need it to be all that fancy. I mean, you look at people like the crates or Cash Money AP, and they don't have responsive templates. They they just have graphics, and the beat speaks for itself. Exactly. So you just got to you got to try what works for you. you know? it, 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 yeah, and that, that was my point of why I wanted you to explain that. So you need to try different stuff out. Like, it's it's easy for me to sit up here and show you guys a bunch of ad stuff, which I'm going to do, but I'm trying to get the point across, too, that advertising is all about testing stuff out. So I'm not saying, like, this video I'm showing you is, like, what you should exactly do. You have to try different things to see what works. Now, my one critique to Tundra, which I, I didn't even listen to this stuff before I came on here because I didn't want to give myself a biased ear or a biased view, so I just made sure the files were working, obviously, but I didn't get into them. So this is the first time I'm really like seeing just the beginning of this. And I can tell you right from the beginning, in my opinion, for beat videos, that he has an intro from like zero to 20 seconds, right? That's just an intro. And then it kind of like drops at like 21, 22 seconds, I believe. With beat videos, I feel like you should be, until you've actually built up like your pixel traffic and you've built up an actual audience, and you have constant traffic coming in and a constant audience of people buying stuff, you should really try to start your beats when they're dropping. So when people are seeing these ads or, and they're auto playing or they're hitting play on the first one, like they shouldn't have to sit through an intro. People's attention spans are real short. So that'd be my first recommendation. When you're creating this content, make sure it's hitting right away. Don't let people get bored and then skip over and then you know you lose a potential website visitor who could potentially become a customer. So that was just my main point with this. I didn't want to get too crazy in the content because I think all you guys do your own thing. Uh, you have your own styles. And I think you should tr try different things. Try still images. Try moving graphics. Learn a little bit video about video editing. And, and you try to get as good as possible so you don't have to outsource or, you know, or have low-quality stuff. So based on like what I, he sent me, I was able to tell in his ad account that – on the ads that he has running that aren't actually even doing that bad. Um, but I can tell he's just running like re remarketing campaigns. And if I'm wrong on that Tundra, feel free to type in and pay will alert me. But um, for what I see, he's going, actually, I think one was not, let me, let me, let me just take a look again. Yeah. So he's going after his website visitors with this one and he's just keeping it broad and he's serving people these ads. Okay, so that's that's the one he has rocking. And then the other one, you guys need to do, Tunch, you need to do a better job at naming your ads and stuff too. <laughs> I mean, listen, everybody's actually got their own method, so I shouldn't knock it, but I don't know, I'm like super specific about stuff, so I'll show you what I do. Um, so this might just work better for you. Why I keep clicking that. So this one, yeah. So this one, he's going after people who he narrowed his audience down from. Oh, pain man, he's targeting you, bro. <laughs> Smart, nice. Yeah, nothing wrong with it, man. It's free game. Uh, and then he narrows down the Facebook page admins. So this isn't. I mean, it's a big audience, six point seven million. All right, so. So now we're here. We got our content. We pixels been firing. You should do that. Not the day you want to run ads either. So make sure your pixels working, test it out for like a week or two. Make sure you're getting some traffic rolling in um, and stuff like that. So there's numerous things that I think you should be doing. And the first thing that I like to do with more rappers and artists, but I also do it with producers is I like doing one, one beat videos, right? So a lot of you guys do like the, the multiple slides and, uh, and the carousels and stuff like that, which is great. And we are going to use those, but if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of traffic or you're just want to build more traffic, we're going to do like what they call like pretty much a cold, a cold ad. It's not going to be anything we're gathering from analytics from your site. It's not going to be anything, um, from your email list, it's nothing like that. Those are all like more custom audiences and like specific audiences. For this, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna create a new campaign. And there are a couple things you could actually do. We can do traffic to send traffic, which we're gonna do. Um, 
you could do a brand awareness as well that's just going to drive awareness to it, but we're going to do traffic. So the new campaign, we can just call it Trampy Cold, right? We're not going to do a split test. I'm not going to get into all this stuff just because I just feel like it's so much. I just want to kind of go over the basics just so you guys can see um, how I do stuff. All right, so Tundra, you let me know earlier that basically any beat on your website is available for free, right? If they give you, uh, I think, a Twitter follow or something like that, um, it's a very basic MP3 tagged lease, correct? Payne, can you just, like I guess I can't see the thing. Yep, Tundra says yep. Yeah. Okay, I just want to clarify. I don't want to say something that's wrong. All right, so Tundra, pick a beat. I'm going to create this ad for you and I'm going to, I'm going to save it and then we can just pause it real quick and then you can swap out the video you want for it. But I'm just going to go through cause I don't, I don't want to use, I guess we could just use that one video just to do it. So at least it's somewhat accurate actually. All right, let's do daydreaming, right? So you have daydreaming. We name this ad set daydreaming. All right, so daydreaming, since you guys can't hear when I play it. Tundra, how, how would you describe that beat? Like, who would you hear on that beat? Who do you envision hearing on that beat? Tundra says Frank Ocean. Who else? Give me a couple, like five, six names. Triple X. If he's got a... Nope. We could do the discography too. Who else? Uh, Caesar. Let's see if she has something. This thing, man, they got they got rid of so many different audiences. Yeah, keep going. You should be asking yourself this stuff too with every beat. You should have a nice list of people, like very specific ones that you can hear, and then ones that you know. They're kind of on the outskirts, I guess. He says maybe Eminem, so that's an outskirts one. Yeah, that's... <sighs> so who else sounds like Frank Ocean? There's a better question. <laughs> if you can't come up with more, like then think of the artist that you really think you can hear on it and then kind of find comparables to that too. He says it was a Frank Ocean times triple X type beat, um, so... Yeah, so who sounds like those two? Because Triple X isn't on here. So that's what I'm saying. You're going to hit yeah. roadblocks like this. You can't just say, oh, well, this is all I'm going to do. So you gotta, we got to maneuver our way through this. So like, we're going to find some people that make sense. It's a process. Yeah, some people that sound like, like uh, similar artists would be mm -hmm. uh, Little Skies, Juice World. Let me uh, see, if, see, these guys are all new, so they probably all yeah. don't have uh, audiences yet because Facebook is the one who dictates these audiences. Yeah, I'm shocked my name is in there. It's nuts. Yeah, it's crazy, right? But you've been on it for a long time. These kids are younger, so they haven't been using Facebook. Uh, Khalid, K H A L I D. Yeah. Is it this dude? I don't think it's this dude. I think it's uh, just Khalid. Yeah, it's just Khalid. Yeah. Damn, not even him, huh? I'm glad, man. I'm glad we're running a roadblock because you're gonna. This is gonna happen. Like you're gonna run into a roadblock of people you can't think of. What about Black Six Black? Oh, the yeah, he don't get nothing either, man. It's crazy. What the hell has happened to Facebook? All right, we can pick another beat. <laughs> pick another beat if we don't want to do this. But we don't have to. We can, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we we should do it by beat. I'm trying to make uh, ration, rational thinking here to move us forward, but. I'm looking for his suggestions because it's his beats, man. Let me see what I like to do. Sometimes I'll type in whatever the main artist is. I'll just type in Frank Ocean featuring on uh, Google or YouTube and then uh, whatever you pops go. up. So yeah, see. this is this is what I mean, man. Advertising is all creating, man. There's no like, 
on some master list of people you should be targeting. Like this is like you put your put your thing caps on and start getting creative. Yeah. And I I mean I can chime in. I just was kinda hoping he would, you know. Someone suggested BJ the Chicago kid. He might have some. Yeah. There we go. Anderson Pack, I don't know if that I haven't heard the beat. He got some. He can tweak all this. That's what I'm saying. I just want to keep it moving. Yeah, Isaiah Rashad has been another suggestion. How is that? I know it's spelled a little differently. A is it I H I S A I? There he is. I got him. Small. I mean, like with Kendrick, J. Cole, people like that fit in this. He would know. I mean, I can listen to the beat again too. Let me actually listen to it again. Maybe J I D G. Probably not on there. Maybe. Slow melodic vibes. So just slow BPM, melodic vibes, chill, laid back, shit like that. And that's what I grab from it in 10 seconds. Well, all right, for example's sake. I like to load up the interest with maybe eh, five to ten, depending on what the return is. Um so Let's also do let's just throw J. Cole in there. Those in J. Cole Nation. We'll throw in let's throw in Throw Kendrick in there too. Yep. All right, so now when you have like a nice little group of artists, narrow that down to people who are interested in rapping. What's freestyle rap? It's eight billion. Narrow that again. Uh, da, da. Just watch people because I kind of just zone in and on some stuff. And I'll explain. Hmm. Should already have hip hop. All right. Yo, so this this could be a good start for a very a cold audience based on the beat. Now, like I said, with the specific beat, you want to very much fine tune it, right? So, like, you want to get these people really, really well. And it, depending on like the size, like this is seven hundred two ninety three one point seven. You know, Kendrick and Jay are gonna always uh, give you more. So, be careful with the. Um, with those targets, but also make sure it's not too small as well, especially for like a cold audience that we're going to build. Um, I always narrow down to obviously we're looking for rappers. So people who like to freestyle rap and like rapping and that's actually huge audiences, like 109 million. Now some might kind of have both, you know, somebody might have this information on both their prof profiles. So it might not be an actual hundred and you know, eight and a half million it might be lower than that it might be like 102 million, but it's a big group. 
And then you can mess around down here. You can go after end up people. So basically people have to be a fan of one of these people, one of these two things, and then one of these four things. And you can get creative. Like I said, test stuff out, see really where your market and your audiences live. But once you have that secure, you got to figure out basically where you want to go after. So do you want to just do the United States? You want to do Canada? You know, you want to do Germany, Australia. This is stuff you can look at your analytics too and see kind of like where, where your fans are coming from um, to make better judgment. Um, age. I mean, is there any 13 year olds buying, buying beats online? You think, I don't know. I don't know. You know, maybe we do 16 to. Like 16 to 35, right? Now what you could do too, is you could take Germany and Australia off and call this daydreaming North America. Then you're only going after North America. And then you could do another ad set and do world or do Europe or do whatever. So you can literally have for one beat to get rocking on a cold audience, you could have like five or six ads inside ad sets inside this ad campaign. And that's a cool way to, to see where the traffic's coming from too. So I'll actually do that real quick. So we'll do North America. And this is what we're going to rock with. So we're going to save this real quick. Oh, and if you don't want to go after people who are fans of your page, you can go here and exclude people who like your page. So you're not going after people on your page because I'm going to show you why after this. Save this audience. Uh, call it whatever you want. Maybe just call it Jay Dreaming audience. You can make audiences for every beat you have. That might actually be a really cool way to filter and find stuff. Um, then you edit your placements. So after you do that, you scroll down. Automatic, they say, always do this, blah, 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 blah. That's up to you if you want to have them everywhere. For this purpose, I'm just going to take off Messenger, and I'm going to take off the audience network, and I'm going to take off me. Personally, I hate right column ads. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a right column ad. I hate them. I've never clicked on them. I just don't think they work. So I'm taking that off too. So we're going to do Facebook feeds, instant articles, um, as well as Instagram feed and stories. You can mess around with mobile devices. If you want to hit only people with, you know, Apple iPhones, Androids, you can do that if you want. You can go after people on mobile or people on desktop. I would go after people on desktop. Um, I mean, I would keep it all, but if you want to be real specific and you want to test out clicking just desktop, cause most people aren't probably going to complete a transaction on their phone to buy a beat. I mean, they may, but I think a lot of people are listening to the beats too on their computer. So it's up to you. You can mess around with that too, but they give you the options to do all that. I'm going to set your daily budget or lifetime budget. I do daily. I just like how that works. This obviously is not in us dollars, so I have no idea what equals what, but I'm just going to put $1. One euro, okay. Um, and then you can run it consistently. You can start end date if you want. I'm just gonna run it consistently. Um, now we're trying to send people, right? We're trying to send people to a specific beat on his, on his page. So you have two different options, landing page views. We'll deliver your ads to people who are more likely to click on your ads link and load the landing page. You need a pixel installed, we have that. What you can do, we'll deliver your ads to the right people to help you get the most link click from your ad to a destination. You can do either one. I think for more bang for the buck round for this first cold ad, we're just gonna do landing page views. Uh, your bid strategy can keep it low as cost. We're just trying to keep costs down for something like this. Uh, get charged by impression. You can schedule if you don't wanna run them at a certain time. Maybe look at the time zones and just think about when your audience would be online, 16 to 35 years old, 
Maybe you're not doing early mornings. Maybe you're not doing, you know, it is what it is. You can basically go with that and make judgments on that and test things out. After that, just hit continue. Your ad set name, it's basically just, or the ad name is just basically off of the uh, ad set. I usually just name it the same thing, but if you want to get more specific, you can. I think it was just daydreaming. North America. Okay. So and you would click, you would have to have your stuff set up too um, in your ads manager. You can set up, um, obviously your page will be connected and your Instagram account, you would connect that. It's real easy. You can do it inside the page settings. Real simple. I'm sure you guys already have it done. So now you can either create an ad or use an existing post. So for this cold ad, we're gonna do a single video. We're gonna upload. Now I, Tundra, I would probably not use this beat video for this. I wanna make that clear. Um, I would do something that was maybe a little longer than a minute, because I think these are all minute, and I would cut off the intro and mess around with some different graphics and stuff. Maybe do a still image, uh, moving graphics, stuff like that, and just see what works. But this is not going to be something you want to have an intro on, for sure. Because this is a cold audience, so you really need to grab people's attention quick, because they don't know who you are. Should okay, Mike, Mike, we have a question. Um, yeah, shoot. OP Beats wants to know what happens if you set it to desktop? Um, is it still shown on Instagram as normal? It's a good question. I'm pretty sure it does because it's not. Um, well, I don't know why you would want to do that. So in that case, because, I mean, Instagram's a mobile app. So if you want to do a desktop-only ad, then just take off Instagram and then just run another ad set under this campaign. You get what I'm saying? So just basically, so set it up. And when you edit the placements, just take off Instagram. So it's not there anymore. And then, uh, my bad, it's up here. Uh, let's switch it to desktop. Bang, we'll knock this out. And you just basically duplicate the, uh, duplicate the ad again and then put back on Instagram and then you could take Facebook off if you wanted to and do mobile only. I mean, there's a lot of different stuff that you can do. So there's ways around it. It's just sometimes it's good to actually do these all separate. It might be a little tedious. You might have five, six, seven ads for one beat, but you're going to test a lot of stuff out. Hopefully that suffices. Um, so let me go back. Cool. So videos uploaded. Something cool too you might be able to do is even add like a text border, kind of like how people do those meme style border videos that says like, you know, like tag a rapper who would kill this or something like that. Um, those always work good. I know that you got to be careful with the text size though, because you're not allowed to cover a lot of the add up with text. So be careful on that. Um, but you want to, what we're going to do with this first cold ad is we're basically going to just want to drive a shitload of traffic to people who would make sense to want to buy beats and then just send a shitload of traffic and then start watching what they're doing. Who's just viewing, who's adding stuff to the card, who's purchasing, stuff like that. So once you got the video up, you can choose thumbnails here, custom thumbnail if you have something. Um, this is all the same, obviously. So now here is where you would put actually, let me. Grab it from his pro page. I'm going to turn this off once I run it too, just so he's aware. It's going to uh, pause it. I don't know which one it is. 
Oh, it's this one, the XXS one. Cool. So with this, with this cold ad where we're just trying to drive traffic, what's the best way to drive traffic? Give somebody something for free. So since all his beats are free for a tagged version for, I guess, a follow on Twitter or whatever he offers, we can write something like, you know, like download this beat for free. I'm just being real simple here, but you can get, you can get, um, you can get creative with what you want to write. You know what I mean? The more creative, the better. So, you know, you could do a, a meme style board. You can do it in the text. Tag a rapper who would kill this. You can actually move this down to here. This will keep loading. All right, Mike, so as that's loading, we have a good question coming in. Um, it has to do with click funnels, which I'm starting to learn about now. Uh, uh, but my best friend, Jacob, he's not actually my best friend, but that's his username. He, he wants to know if you should send visitors who click on these ads to the website or to a click funnel. That's a personal decision. I mean, I don't, I'm not. The way I do things, I mean, yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, that's up to you, man. I'm not, I'm not an advocate for doing it either way. I'm just showing you to send traffic directly to your page and how you can build audiences based off the traffic that you get there. Um, but yeah, you can more than welcome. I mean, ClickFunnels is just basically sending people through a process. So um, that's, it's totally up to you. Any other questions? No. Okay. So yeah. So if you want to figure something out, you want to put here, you know, put some emojis in here, make it look all cool. Why is it? There you go. You get the gist. So once you have this laid out, I'm more want to show you guys like just processes of stuff you can do more or less than like making your creative for you. Cause creative is something I feel like you guys will understand more about your brand than I will. And you can test stuff out on your own. So I'm just kind of giving you like a rough idea. So once you like figure this stuff out, you can put the download call to action on here. You can, you can see like which each ad will look like. With Instagram too, um, they don't always they don't offer the same thing. So you might want to put download this to be for free up in the text actually, um, and that's like I said, if you want to do these ad sets differently, where you just do Facebook by itself, so then you can kind of edit it and do more stuff to it, that might be a good idea. So then, if you only do Instagram, you know maybe you'll put it in here. So once you have all this done, your Facebook pixels turned on, you would hit confirm. I just think load. Boom. I'm going to turn it off. <clears throat> All right. So you would literally create another. So I'm going to set this up for Tundra and he can basically go in and, and go in here and tweak things how he wants. Do a worldwide one. 
And what we're going to do is use a saved audience and pull up the daydreaming audience, edit it. You can pick worldwide, so it does the whole world. Then like you can exclude, like say like, oh, right, I don't want to target Russia. You can exclude people. Like, oh, I don't want to, you know, exclude uh, Asia. Whatever it is. So you wouldn't hit these places. We want to hit the same ages, same artists, everything's the same. And then make sure they're not friends of our page. Save as new. All right, just saved it. You got your audience already done. Same thing. All this can stay the same. See something. What you can do is should be able to do this. So I'll have to go back. Sorry if this is tedious and boring. What am I doing? Well, Ang Anger Day says that, that you're fucking rad, so. Tedious or not. Yeah, I mean, this shit is like real basic, just setting up shit, man. So I don't want to, you know. That's why with like the click funnel stuff like this, we're just, I, you're going on a whole nother. That's like research you guys should do on your own. Like, I'm just, it's not a, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to go too far in depth where I'm like, some people have no knowledge and are just kind of lost. And then like people who kind of already have some knowledge and they want to kind of go deeper. So we'll have to do something specific for like deeper stuff. But um, I'm just pulling up the ad that I did originally because there should be a, there should be a preview here, right? There should be a Facebook preview. I don't want to grab, I think it's this number. All right. I'm going to click back here. Let me see. Boom. See what I did? I grabbed the same post ID from the other ad and put it in here and into the enter post ID. So the traffic's still going all to the same video. So you don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. So this is done. I mean, it's easier once you get this. So now you're going to have a US one and a worldwide one. And like I said, you could even narrow this down to daydreaming worldwide desktop, desktop Facebook. You know, there's so many different ways you can just target different things to see what works. That's why I always say advertising is just all about testing shit out. Like, I don't know anybody. They, obviously, there's people who are better at it than others, but you still have to go through these processes of understanding like who your audience is and understanding who you're trying to connect with. Um, all right, so we're going to save this. I shouldn't run because it's going to be right under the same campaign as the one I turned off. But you can literally do this with like five beats too. It all depends on your budget too. Like you can have like five different styles of beats going to five totally different audiences. Like, okay, you have one beat that's going to go to Frank Ocean and, you know, people like that. And then the next beat who's going after Rick Ross and 
Gucci Man, and then another beat that's going to Joey Badass and Kendrick and people like that. So you can do you can you can pull in different audiences using these single beat videos. I just think carousels are dope to use for when you actually have an audience and you've actually built up some growth and you can actually retarget people. Cause then people are going to be like, Oh, I know that dude. Like yeah, I've clicked his beats. I've gone to his website. He's got some new shit. Like, let me check it out. People don't know you. You have to really appeal to them. That's why the content is so important. People are going to have to hear it and just be like, Oh shit. As they're scrolling and see it and stop and want to interact with it and want to click on it. So you got to make sure the content is real appealing. Um, All right, so we're back in here. So now we have Daydreaming Worldwide, Daydreaming North America. So we have this these ads that are basically going after a, a fairly larger audience with a bunch of artists in mind with a narrowed down audience that the people are fans of those artists, plus they rap, most likely in the music industry. Um, there's other settings too in there where you can pick people who are like admins of a page. So a lot of rappers have their own, you know, their pages. You can do that. Um, play around with it, see what you want to do. What I recommend is doing a bunch of these first. If you're just getting started out and you're trying to send traffic to your site, come up with the dope content, make sure it's dropping right when the video starts, no long intros that are going to make people bored or just, you know, not want to waste the time to check it out. Um, I know that's hard to hear because intros to me are amazing within hip hop and music in general. Um, but unfortunately in this day and age, people don't have the attention span, so they're going to scroll right by. So once you have that going, do a bunch of these. You can do, as you can see, you could do a worldwide one. You could do a Europe one if you want to. You can do that and keep the audience the same or maybe tweak it here and there, um, maybe tweak the age groups. That's all stuff you're going to have to test out and see what works. And it's cool to do it for like a dollar a day. If you can put up a couple hundred bucks a month, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, you could really do a lot of testing and a lot of, a lot of um, ways to see what works and what doesn't. So as you're setting all this traffic, since it is um, a link click or landing page view, you're sending all these people to your page where your pixel is running. So it's collecting this data and it's putting it all back onto your audiences. So as you build this up, I would do this. It's a, listen, advertising is a slow process too. So don't, don't get upset if stuff isn't working right away. Give it time. I would probably do this and see how the traffic is and see what happens. You might convert some sales, but we're not doing conversion uh, ads here. We're doing, this, these are just cold ads to an audience that you're just going after just to try to build the traffic and get people to kind of find your, to kind of find your stuff. These ads should always be going on, right? So you should have like, maybe like your top five selling beats that you do this for and you break it down. So in this whole, this whole campaign, Trampy cold, whatever you would want to call it. You could just call it cold, cold ads. You're going to have ideally 10 of these in here. Maybe every beat with one worldwide, one North America, or however you want to do it. You might have 20. It's up to you. Break this all down and always have these running and always hitting people who are not fans of your page and hit people and then tweak the audiences too. Because what you can look at to see if you're hitting the same people over and over again in these cold audiences um, I think I saw it on his thing earlier. Yeah, that's wild. So you, you can look at the frequency. And as you can see, this says the average number of times each person saw this, your ad. So this ad that he was running, um, people have seen it 12 times. Now, that's not a horrible thing necessarily because it takes people sometimes a lot of times to see an ad to really engage it or click on it. But just keep an eye on that and see, because with these cold ads, you, you're, the idea of this is not necessary to convert sales. That's like the step after all this. This is really just to send a, just traffic to your page to keep incoming traffic coming, to build up your pixel, to find out who's doing what on your site. And if you don't have a big budget, like I said, you can do a dollar a day. So if you had 10 of these, 10 of these going at a dollar a piece, 30 days, was that $300? I mean... It advertising is a, it's a, it's a process that it's just, you keep building off of it and building off of it. So just don't be discouraged. Just have the patience and it, it does work if you stick to it. Okay. Um, on that, on that note, we have a question. Uh, OPP yeah. Beats wants to know, um, would you recommend spending 
more money if an ad starts to convert at a dollar. He, he's just wondering if it's if it scales. If it if it um. Yeah, scaling you got to be careful with too. Um, but ideally, you would think yeah, right. Like so, if something's doing well, you just want to dump more money into it. Test it out. See how long you can ride your current budget and how it's converting. I mean, if it's converting ridiculously, um, spending more money might not be the right thing to do. You might be able to keep your spend low and just keep bringing in 10 times the return or whatever it is. So, again, it, it comes down to testing, in my opinion. Um, but scaling is not always the answer. It's not like, oh, I'm seeing a good traction. Let me just dump all this more money into it. Keep the pace for a little while and just see how it goes. And if it's steady and it's steady and it's steady, maybe over time you can scale a little bit more. But um, these ads, like I said, they're, they're again, we call them like cold ads because you're going after cold traffic. Like these people don't know you. They're not through any list you have or any pixel traffic. It's just a, it's just a cold ad. So I wouldn't go crazy spending money on these like all the time. Like, in the beginning you will, but after you start driving traffic to your page and this starts to build up, you can drop the spend down on the cold ones, but keep them going just so you're always showing your best work to new people who ultimately are returning and giving you this audience. So he has, this is his pixel audience. So he has 2,500 unique people. That might not seem like a lot, like, oh, I sent 50,000 people click my ad, but it's only this size. That's because maybe the people are clicking the same ad over and over again. They've seen it numerous times, whatever it is. Um, this will grow and it will continuously grow. It always updates. So as you're sending people to your page and the traffic is coming in, Pixel's tracking all that and it's gonna uh, keep updating this audience. Now, once you have this set up, man, ads manager, you are so slow. So just imagine inside this, this campaign, there's five different beats. Maybe you don't necessarily break each one down this way. Maybe you want to do desktops or mobile, whatever it is, but you should have a bunch of ads. That's probably at least five at minimum. Cause you want to have one for each. Um, and you don't have to do five beats to be that to be honest, you could probably do three. If that will save you some money to get started, do that too. But as you're sending more traffic, you're going to keep these rocking plan on not necessarily making a bunch of money up front. I mean, I'm just going to be honest because if you don't have an audience, the idea that they might buy something the first time is not too big. It's going to be harder to convert them. But as you start building this up, you're going to start to see a core audience build and you're going to be able to market back to them. And then that's when you can do cool stuff like create ads around the website traffic, which he is doing already. Um, and maybe Tundra can chime in and just say how his, remarketing has gone. Oh, and by the way, all your saved audience are save audiences are in here. He looks like he made some. Uh, I don't know what his free beats one was. Germany, UK, United States, 50. Just a ton of different artists, no narrowed down. You can change the mail too. That's something I didn't do. You can definitely do that if you think you have a mail, a more mail base. But these are pretty broad, these audiences. I'd probably just delete them because these are huge. I don't necessarily want something that big. Because then you're going to be hitting a lot of people that um, just aren't – it's, it's going to be so wide. Um, so, yeah, so he's got 2,500 people, right? So, oh, yeah, I, I asked Hunter a question. How, how is the remarketing and stuff going in his opinion? He said the remarketing is going okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so these long names. Of, I think these are all beat names. <clears throat> Let me just look at that real quick. 25 cents. 
You spend a dollar a day. It's like 25 cents a link click. People are seeing it. Well, so. See, the problem that I see with this is his traffic to his site isn't bad. Don't get me wrong. He has built up a decent custom audience of like pixel traffic. But I think 12 and a half times might be like too much people are seeing these ads. And I think it's been running since April, I think I just saw. So what might be happening is he's just serving these, the same ad over and over again to a small group of people. So I think he's like, you kind of skip this step in my opinion. I mean, there's, you can still definitely run remarketing ads, but I just feel like you need to build your audience up to a bigger audience. So you're getting it in front of more people and the right people. So you kind of like, they didn't do any cold traffic stuff. You just kind of went right into like what you had already built, which is fine. You can definitely still do that, which a dollar a day is perfectly fine. But I think it was running since April. I saw, um, and then the same thing are these same it's these are the same videos he sent me so i think all of them had intros um or a lot of them did i just think and it's they all look the same too that's something else going back to the a design aspect probably try to get some stuff that sticks out Pain. i like the i like the, like i've seen you use them a couple other people use the artist pictures like they're kind of cool looking cartoonists i'm not saying you have to use those but maybe something that just kind of grabs people more or even keep the same thing you have and maybe make it larger um and then change the colors just mess around with it um this is an exclusive facebook just so yeah he was really going after um a remarketing audience here so this is once you build up a bunch of cold audiences and you start sending people and it's fire and then you you can you can run this and we can do we're gonna do a conversion ad And then you can, you can make a decision. You can do single videos or you can do a carousel. So remarketing, sometimes a carousel makes more sense. So you can do either one or maybe do both. Um, I know I said a trillion times, but again, it comes down to just trying stuff out. Um, but let's just say, you know, we're doing daydreaming again. And we want to track people who buy the beat or by a beat. So this is going to be under purchase. We can go in here and use the same or now we're going to do custom audience, his website visitors, spread this out 13 to 65. Everybody, you're not going to do anything else because you're the group is website visitors. So you don't have to do, unless you want to hit a specific age group and location, you can do that. But usually with website visitors for what you guys are trying to accomplish, it's just keep put website visitors. So you're going to put these ads in front of everybody who visited the website. Some businesses might want to be like, Oh, I only want to put something in front of, you know, people in the United States or, you know, in California, whatever it is. I don't, you guys are worldwide business. So you don't have to worry about all that when it comes to these remarketing ads, unless you want to get like super specific. <clears throat> and the same thing, man, you're just going to go through the same thing that we went through before where you want to pick to put this stuff. Now you have a option here to do a lowest cost bid strategy or target cost where you want to, you know, keep it at a certain number. Um, seven days, click a one day view, click, keep it on that. What's cool is with conversion ads, it tracks like someone could see your ad today, go on the site, mess around, maybe list this some stuff, maybe put it on the cart, leave, come back and buy two days later. It's still going to track that conversion. It tracks up to seven days. Daydreaming again. Ba -ba Bang. Yeah, I should have never. Sh oh, no, I still got it. Dope. Nope. 
So you could do that. You could do the same beat or, or the same video, or you could do a carousel, which is exactly what it is. It's moving. You can put You, see, you can literally have all these boxes. So you can do numerous beats. So the way we uploaded the last video, you would do the same thing. Manly choose. So video add one within this, you would select the video. Select. Select the video, select, and you could just do this over and over again. So this is more of an ad that when you land on it, it's gonna have multiple things. So your headline can read, you know, whatever type of beat it is. And you would do that under here. Headline, you know, Frank Ocean type beat. So you can edit this however you want it. And then you could do that literally for every one. I'm just making stuff up, but you get the idea. The next one would obviously be a new video and a new beat. You would have to get that URL. Then you would, you know what I mean? You would go on the site, grab whatever that is, then come back. Pop that in here, it's the same one, but you get the idea. I would probably always stick with download for you guys because download just sounds, I don't know, it sounds the most appealing to me. Like learn more, that doesn't really make any sense. Listen now, I mean, I guess, I don't know, I just feel like download, and especially if it is um, a free beat, that works, but with these, with the remarketing ones, you're probably not going to be doing a lot of free stuff unless you want to do kind of another free campaign to drive people to do something else. But this would, this would be, you know, you're remarketing to your people who came to your site and fired in your pixel are people you want to show kind of new stuff to. And you can do it this way and you can do, as you can see, you can just keep adding beats. You can have a slider of 15 new beats going all the time. And I would do this for every beat. Once you have built up some traffic and put money into it every day, dollar, two dollars, you know, whatever your, your budget can handle. Um, this isn't finished. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get through as much as I can in a short period of time. My best advice though, learn how to use ad manager. Learning the processes of clicking buttons and even the basics could help you a ton. At the end of the day with music, it's about the quality of the music and the quality of your video ads. So focus as much time or more on the quality and the content than trying to master advertising. Because even if you know the, a little bit, it's still going to be more than most people. So I just turned these both off. So now we have like a warm, we have a cold. So what are other warm audiences? Let's go to his audiences. So let's do a lookalike audience. A lookalike audience basically is an audience that Facebook takes and runs through their system and the algorithm pulls out people who are similar to your custom audiences. So, I 
do so we could do tundra beats So this is going to pull people who like his page and you can break it down this way. You should be able to click that. Let me do that one more time. Look alike. Instead of clicking here, you hit create new, hit a custom audience. Website traffic. Oh, actually, hold on one second. Do I actually want to finish this real quick? I did add the United States. So you can do a you can do an audience basically that will look like um, Tundra's page. So now this you can move this around the audience size to how big you want it to be. So let's just do. Let's do create this audience. So it's going to give us three different ones, and you can change that two to one. Let me see something else. So let's do one. Can you go to 180, right? You can always edit the name too. Duplicate them. It's weird. You can do custom audiences by customer file. So if you have some, like a mail list or Mailchimp or your own email list data. Uh, be very careful. Make sure you have permission to use these emails. They've gotten like crazy strict with everything that happened. Um, website traffic like we just did, which he already had one. Website visitors, I just did it again. Um, don't have app, don't have this. Uh, offline activity. This is something new and like, not new, but basically stuff they've updated. Uh, but this is something that's not really going to matter for you guys. Um, engagement's cool too. So what you can do is, you can pick a video, pick people who watch like 75% of your video. So this could be something else that you do for um, a custom audience based off of your cold traffic. You can go after people who watched uh, maybe like 75% of the video so you know they're interested um, on top of going after them through remarketing from web traffic. Uh, you can choose the videos. You can pick multiple videos. So now it like, would literally go after do every one. All, every, every video that he had up here that I picked, people who watch 75%, you know, so you would name this whatever you want. 75% of videos watched. that audience dude this is like me this audience builder like inside ads manager should become like your best friend 
right? So try not to make like too wide audiences, like these ones that he originally made, which are cool to get started, but you should really be working on building up your audiences by beat. I think that would be the most ideal way for you guys to do this. Um, and if you want to break it down by, you know, United States and that's cool. So then you have an audience for every, every, um, every beat. And then you can pull your website visitors, which will always be running as you're, as you're sending more traffic. So you have that audience. You could do a lookalike audience based off of your brand and your traffic as well and create lookalike audiences that will kind of duplicate and they'll try to find people who are similar to the people you've built up. You can make them off of video views. You can do it off of fan page engagement. You can click your Facebook page. Anybody who's engaged with your page, anybody who visited your page, people who engage with a post or ad, you could do something like that. Add interaction, create that. So you can make all these warm audiences. These are all warm audiences. These are people who've interacted with your ads, people who visited your website. Um, even lookalike audiences are still warm because it's pulling information based off of other warm information. So it's just giving you a wider range. So that would could still be considered a, a warm one. But the cold ones, like I said, I think the best way for you guys to do it is by beat and have them running and just be flooding your page with traffic. And you might even convert sales from them because, and you can track that still in ad manager. You can see these conversions and the cost per purchase. You can still look at this type of stuff. But with the cold ones, it's just really about driving the traffic and really getting people hip to your brand and just building yourself up as an artist because you are an artist. This is what I do with my artists over the last two years. We spent like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, and we built in from having thirty-three uh, fans on Facebook. Um, and not even that the number matters, but you know, between both Facebook and Instagram, it's almost a hundred thousand. But it's the interaction we get, it's the love, it's the crazy stuff these fans do for him, and it just takes time. Um, and we do this the same way. We'll we'll run cold ads. To people who never heard of him and have never heard his music, will run his top three uh, videos. We've been running them. Some, his video came out two years ago. We've run that video for two years. There's people who still have never seen it. And that's how you gotta think. There's always people who haven't heard your beats or seen your or seen your content. So it's cool to always have those going because you're always driving people to your site and you're always collecting that data. Now going back to the funnel question, you can do it that way too because you can send them through a funnel and have them do different things and even get more data. I mean, technically, you could do, you could do stuff on here as well. There's all sorts of. Uh, you can now do Facebook messaging ads where you can actually send people messages in their inbox. There is automated SMS messaging, or not SMS. I'm thinking of text um, messaging on here that you can basically, if someone comments on your page uh, or on your post, it will automatically trigger and send them a message. Like, there's so many different things you can do and send people through. Uh, doing stuff so it's just all personal choice but this is kind of like the super basic way of getting set up and running ads it's you send traffic and you send cold leads and then you take those cold leads and look at the analytics and run remarketing ads to those people and that like pretty much sums it up to get started but there's so much that goes into that it sounds like a couple easy steps which it is but there's a lot of stuff that goes into it too having the right content, building up these audiences and having patience to be honest, because everybody wants instant gratification and that's just not how it works. Um, anybody have any questions? Yeah, we got a question here. Uh, he says, what would you consider, this is from OP, what would you consider a reasonable audience size? What's too small and what's definitely too large? Yeah, I mean, for what you guys are doing, I, I would probably say <clears throat> the smaller audiences are going to be on the remarketing side because that's always going to be smaller because you're narrowing down your traffic and narrowing down the people who are interested in your stuff. So I wouldn't really look at those numbers. Um, I believe it has to be, it used to be 2,500 people in an audience to even run an ad. 
So that's the first thing. That's another reason why it's really, really hard to run remarketing ads if you have no traffic because they're not going to allow you to use that audience. Um, they've been changing this shit so much, though, that look into that and confirm that. But to my knowledge, there's still 2,500 people. But when it comes to these cold ads, don't go insane like 10, 15, 20 million people. I think that's just a little too extreme. Maybe shoot for the two to five, two to six million range. Again, there's no definitive answer. Try it out and see what the response is. If it just blows up, you might just hit hit the hit the nail on the head. So, but if it's slow, you might be hitting the wrong the wrong target base. You might be have a too widespread of an ad. Um, you might not have narrowed down enough audiences. The key with the audiences, with like narrowing them down, is you're trying to hit. Yo, who the hell's playing pinball, man? I want to play. Oh, uh, I'd lost my train of thought now. <laughs> what was I saying, Payne? My bad, I had to unmute myself. Um, you were, you were talking about audience size? Yeah, I was going to say something, but now I forget. Um, well, let me go back to here. If I see it, I'll probably remember it. Oh, yeah, the narrowing down. So, like, the way we did this, again, this was, like, super rough, super quick. Everybody saw how quick we did it. It wasn't exactly on point either. Um, but we came up with a group of artists that we thought would fit that specific beat. And then we narrowed it down to freestyle rap or rapping. And then they narrowed it down. So they have to hit three things before we even get this ad put in front of them. This shit says there's 29 million people. That's insanity. So that might be too many audiences. You might have to chop this down a little bit. So that's what I'm saying. Play with it. Also. You'll start seeing this number change. This this thing is not always accurate either. So sometimes maybe run the ad and then let it let it let it run for a day and then kind of check in and see kind of what the reach is at and kind of see how it's performing and um, try to let your ads run though. Like once you're settled and like you're confident in what you're doing, try to go at least a week without touching stuff or until at least it hits like six thousand, six seven thousand people in the reach. The uh, mister. So, so yeah, hopefully that answered your question. Any other questions? Yeah, if, if anyone has a question, just, just type it in, raise a hand, or use the Q&A function. I know that was a lot of information to take in, so I'm sure people will be contacting you after the, the archive video gets uploaded. Yeah, man, and there's there's a lot more that goes into advertising. Like, I don't, I'm not claiming to be like the know all of everything. I I I have done ads for a long, long time. Um, I've taken classes in them. I've just done a shit ton. I've spent probably well over a million or two million dollars between clients over the last five or six years. I did all A3C's advertising last year and like quadrupled their sales. Um, and that's a different monster because you're trying to sell tickets to a festival. So everything is different. That's why it's like so hard to do these advertising things, especially for like producers, because it's like there's so many producers, there's so many different ways of, of marketing yourself, but this does work if you give it time and you just do it the right way. Like I see so many people do advertising and they get so discouraged after a week or two or whatever, or they spend way too much money. I think the last show, the guy, I think he just was spending way too much. He dumped like a thousand dollars in a month into it. It's like, you got to go through the testing portion of all this and, setting your cold traffic and then being able to convert sales through your remarketing. Um, and it's just, it's just a patience game and it's just a testing game. It's a lot of editing and seeing if this title works or cutting off the intros to my beats because Trampy told me to do that because I will lose somebody in the first three seconds. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of stuff that you need to do to get things rocking. But as you start getting stuff rocking, you'll be able to look at it and dissect what you think is going to work better. It's like anything else, man. Like as you learn something, you get better. Think about it. Like how you started making beats. You didn't know what the fuck you're doing. You know, you're clicking buttons and dropping this here and doing, you know, however you started making beats, it probably seemed confusing as shit and it didn't make any sense or maybe it did. And maybe advertising will, but this is like real basic stuff, but it's, it's effective if you have a process in place. And this is a real simple process that I think anybody can really do and it can be affordable. I think you can even drop ads to 50 cents a day. 
I'm pretty sure you can. I've never done that low, but I'm sure you probably can, even just to kind of get your feet wet. But if you have extra money that you blow on eating out a lot or, or doing this or doing that, like kind of try to save some of the money and maybe eat out half the time and save the rest for advertising and play around with things. Like I think you guys will are all creative minds. I think you'll kind of get the gist of it and kind of, you know, kind of find a passion for it too, because then you can start finding shit like, Oh man, you can do this. Oh, you can do that. Oh, this is crazy. You're building all sorts of different audiences and just doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So I don't know. It excites me. And it's cool. Once you see the results too, that's the best part. Once stuff stuff starts building up. Well, Mike, we, we appreciate the hell out of you spending an hour and a half of your time to show this to us. Uh, the archive will be uploaded. Uh, I know we lost maybe one sixth of our audience, uh, but I did want to announce that in July. Let me get let me get the exact date right. Let me get the exact date right. Uh, July. Damn it, man. All right, hold on, Mike. Shout out your social media. <laughs> I have an announcement. And actually, we have another question coming in. Um, but but shout out your social media first so everyone can follow you and harass you about this stuff in the future. Uh, social media is Michael J. Trampy. Am I – here, I'll just type it in the thing. That's Twitter and Instagram. My Facebook is – That's really it, man. That's where you can get at me for the most part. I'm just reading through the comments because I didn't see any of these when I was doing it because I had my screen up. Uh, you're welcome to everybody said thank you. All right, here, here's, here's a question from OP Beats. He says he had a $20 ad running. But he didn't notice that, that he had the campaign set for video views. Um, he yeah, video, almost- video, video views are – I wouldn't waste your time doing that. I mean, you can – well, here's his question. His question isn't about that. He says that he got almost 2,000 10-second video views and a pretty high relevance score, so 10. Um, what was the percentage for 10-second views? Uh, he just said he got 2,000 10-second views off of $20. And he's wondering if he should target, he should retarget that audience. Uh, I mean... Again, going, I guess, back to the to the whole thing is, I mean, if you've done one twenty dollar ad, I probably wouldn't start remarketing ads right now. I would still focus in on pushing people to the to the traffic ads, the landing page views, and bring them to your website so you're collecting that data. And to go back to the the click funnel thing too, like you on your pro page for B stars, you can set it up to where people can sign up for your email list and you can do things that way and then have a have something running like that. And then we just launched Data Crushers. So you can, it's a different service and it costs extra. I think it's like nineteen ninety nine a month, but that does all your cart abandonment and all that stuff and automates your whole process for you. So if someone puts something in the cart and then leaves, like they will pop something up and say, Hey, don't leave. We'll give you 10% off. There's all that stuff you can do, which is technically part of a click funnel because it's just another way of getting at these people. But what I'm describing is basic, basic setup. I just don't think remarketing is necessary for a one twenty dollar ad. Now, if you've done more, that's a different thing. And if your audience is big, sure. But I just don't think it's. I don't know. To me, that question tells me like you're excited and you want to get sales, and I get it. But it's just I don't know if it's going to be worth running a remarketing ad to people off a one twenty dollar ad. You need to build that up, and that's what I'm saying with the patience, man. You might have to go a month, two, three months where you're just doing those types of ads. And yeah, yeah, you could probably throw a dollar or something, I guess, on that if you want to test it out. Sure. But I don't want to say for sure and have you dumping all this money into it and nothing happens. So I'm saying you got to test it out. Start small. All right. I'm going, I'm going through the comments, too, to see if I see anything. That yeah, you no, there shouldn't be any other questions. Um, but anyway, my, my, my big announcement for, for Beat Club, for the 16 people who are still in here, uh, is that on July 17th, the legendary producer Digger will join us, which is dope. Um, I got oh. that locked in today. That will start at 8.30 Central Standard Time, which is a half an hour later than most of these sessions, but it's still t- a Tuesday night, uh, July 17th. Digger, the guy who produced probably one of the, the dopest beats for 50 Cent ever, 
uh, and he just released a book. Um, and, and his Instagram is pretty pretty informative. Uh, he'll, he'll be on here to talk about the book. He'll be on here to talk about all of the educational efforts he's pursuing online for the producer community. Uh, and in the meantime, check out some of his, his, his Instagram posts. Just, just because in spite of it being an Instagram post and, and, and not super in-depth because, you know, it's an Instagram post, so it's short. This, the content he posts about royalty rates, the content he posts about online beat sales and so forth is it's the kind of stuff that makes you want to continue to pursue additional information. Um, so you know, be a good person to ask about music industry questions. He certainly has a lot of experience working in the traditional music industry and he's still talking in, uh, to producers today who are working in the non-traditional music industry, which a lot of us are doing, selling beats online, selling beats to you know this new wave of independent artists. So do not miss that uh, Grammy-nominated producer, legendary tracks, legendary albums, dig it on I, the 17th of July. That's dope. And I was swiping a fly. Don't people don't think I'm crazy like going like this? I forgot I wasn't sharing my screen anymore. Oh no, you're good. Uh, appreciate you, Mike. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, hold everybody. on, is John still there too, man? I didn't yeah, even John's try. John, 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 did you have any questions, man, or anything you want to chime in on the production side? Um, you know, being a producer too, and being a Beat Stars employee as well. Not particularly. Yeah, I'm still here. Um, um I guess um, I was actually thinking. Well, I guess I could ask you, DJ Payne, one. Um, have you ever? I know you use the pro, utilize the pro page as well on your Facebook campaigns. Have you uh, got any conversion data? Because I've, you know, I get you know sales here and there for sure, um, but I never actually noticed any of the conversions actually counting within my uh, Facebook campaign on my, uh, you know, from my pixel. Which I know, you know, there's a lot of factors there. A lot of times the sales may not come from, you know, Facebook ads and other places, but I just wondering what your experience was there. Yeah, I get conversion data. I remember way back, Abe showed me how to add a conversion tab on my ads. I can't, I can't recall offhand how to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But I know if you set up, Mike, uh, you, you helped me with these ads. If, if you set up a conversions ad, then you will track conversions, correct? Exactly. But you, here's too, if you're looking at the stats here, so there's no stats. Oh, this is a horrible example. <clears throat> Let me go to the ad that he actually has running. At least that has some information. You can break this stuff down and customize your columns and go to conversions website. Then you can do website purchases, taking out the landing page views, cost per website purchase. Website purchase conversion value, purchases. Hit apply. Boom. So there's, there would be your values. So why is it not showing this number? Does he have any? He has one. Hold on. The other ad I think had more. Bad example again. I don't know his ads. I apologize. <laughs> you still should be able to custom that. Website purchase is 11. Why is this not showing though? So this gives, this should have a value on it though, right? Like Payne, remember I showed you yours? Like this should have some type of value on it if it's converting, like, I don't know why and this should have this broke down too. I don't know why that's not there. I'd have to dig a little bit more. Uh, let me actually take this off. So it says he's had 11 purchases for 308 
at a six dollar and eighty seven per. But there should be a way that actually breaks down the value of each sale. And this isn't a conversion ad, so maybe that's why it's not showing me this. I don't even know what type of ad this is. Let me look. I think it's just uh something why do I keep doing this this is a link click ad it should still show that information though but <clears throat> that's what I'm saying you could do con a conversion ad once you start actually doing a lot of your remarketing stuff to really track the conversions and track that information but it still should show decent information through like a link click ad. You can still look at those stats. You'd have to change them from this drop down menu and customize them. So, John, I'll look at your account for you too, man, because I think it was. Yeah, it's, actually, it's been a while since I've I actually uh, turned most of mine off uh, in the past uh, couple of weeks. But I, so I haven't, I haven't, it's not fresh on my mind. But, um, but yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do that. Okay. Yeah, I'll just have to I'll have to look, but um you should be able to see the conversions and then they should make sense compared to the to the sales on the site. But remember, like I said, these things track seven days back. So you might get a sale and it might not you know, you might get that sale might not register in, in the in the conversion until a couple of days later too. So it all it all hits differently. So it's it's a hard way to kind of compare sales to like what you're seeing on your back end to like what the ad's doing. It might not fire right away. So just keep keep that in mind too. Right. Yeah, man. Uh yeah, I don't know. I I feel like I feel like I did nothing on this whole time. <laughs> this, there's so much shit that I want to like I could go through and just do, but like I was trying to figure out like the easiest way that would bring the most value to people who have never done ads before. To some people who have had knowledge of doing ads. Um, and like the best way I can explain it and then in the shortest time time uh, period is that send yourself cold traffic and work on building up your traffic and your overall brand awareness and just getting yourself out there and then always be remarketing once you've built your audience up enough and serving those ads to the people that, you know, that you've built up through your pixel and other, you know, custom audiences and there's other shit you should be doing too like like, like we said email marketing there's all those the uh, facebook messaging now there's sms marketing there's so much stuff you can do and you can send them through any type of funnel you want just try to just try to think as a consumer though and just think what's easy what do you see what how why do you interact with content on a daily basis on social media if you do what would you be looking for if you're an artist at a certain age kind of get in their minds and see kind of how they would relate to the content and make that content for them. You got to know your audience, man. It's like the biggest thing that I think people just kind of forget. They just, you know, make too broad an audience. So try to narrow it down and just start sending traffic and then, you know, optimize however you want. If you want to grab emails and want to do all that, it's cool too. But this method will work, man. It'll just take some time. That That's, that's my best advice is just please be patient. It's so many people I see that just, so I stopped doing advertising for independence. It's just no, no offense. It's just people weren't committed to it. It's really hard. My artist, like one of the only people have committed to two years of it. And you think he's made that money back? No, some of it, but not all of it. Not yet. Building an artist brand is take producers hard. Artists is, I feel like 50 times harder. So, um, yeah, I think that's it, man. Cool, man. Well, thank you, Mike. Once again, really appreciate you, especially going above and beyond and doing, you know, over an hour and a half. Uh, this will be archived. 